Welcome back. Interlake High School senior Ashika Saxena graduates from high school this afternoon. Like most of her classmates, she's worked hard for her grades and had a lot of fun, but she's also spent the year designing a 3D printed smartphone attachment and AI software that automatically identifies blood diseases. Her invention earned a $40,000 prize, and she's here today to talk a little bit more about her future plans. Congratulations. Thank you. So there's the invention, and it's not just this prize. You've won other science contests. Us, right? Yeah, I think I've been participating in science fairs for over four years and I've won a total of a hundred thousand dollars. So <laughs> Which is pretty cool yeah. and amazing. Where are you going to college? I'm going to Harvard next year and I'm very excited. Congratulations. <laughs> that you. is so amazing. What is this called? Yeah, so I call my project HemaCam, and as you mentioned, it basically has two parts. So the first part is this microscope attachment that clips on to just a regular smartphone camera. Um, and then, like any other microscope, you can um, put some blood on a slide and simply slide it into the attachment. Right. And then, l with just the regular camera app, it's as simple as taking a selfie. You can just snap photos of your blood cells. Um, and then here I have some photos of blood cells that I've taken before. For, and then I've developed an application that basically analyzes um, the cells in the images and then identifies what diseases you may have. So we're seeing that on camera right now, just kind of a video taking us through what would happen. Why is this such a useful and important thing? Yeah, so especially in developing regions, access to healthcare and specialized equipment is very limited and can be very expensive. So having something like this, which is um, inexpensive and more accessible to people who might not be trained, um, they can basically take this test in the comfort of their home and be able to identify if they have a disease or not. That is really interesting. And so what are some of the diseases that this might help with? Yeah, so I focused on sickle cell disease and I found out that there's a region in India called the sickle belt disease. And because sickle cell disease is genetic, a lot of people don't know that they have it, um, but it can have very severe symptoms. And there is a low cost medication, but the testing for it is very expensive. So if with just a smartphone camera and a simple inexpensive attachment, people can get screened for this disease, then they can be treated faster as well. That's pretty amazing. So what do you see yourself doing going forward in science? Yeah, so I'm very excited about sort of the potential of artificial intelligence and technology and how we can use that to impact um, the real world. So um, at Harvard, I'm planning to study computer science and then hopefully go on further to pursue this area and maybe become a professor or researcher um, working on sort of solving problems with technology. Tell me a bit about your family and your background. What got you so interested in science? We want to replicate this experience <laughs> as much as we can. Yeah, definitely. I think I've always been interested in math, and I think I learned how to program in eighth grade, and I found it very logical, um, and that was very exciting to me. Um, and then uh, I was kind of inspired by a personal experience where I had food poisoning, and I thought, well, this is a kind of avoidable problem. So I reached out to a bunch of labs at the University of Washington and basically worked with them to develop an, a device for detecting food quality and safety issues. Um, and that's kind of how I got started on this whole path and I'm very excited to continue it. How old were you when that happened? Um, I think I was about 14 or 15. So. <laughs> and you're 18 now, right? Yeah, I'm 17. So 17? Yeah. Not even 18 years old. When you got this idea to, to make this gizmo with a 3D printer, did you have anybody um, that you bounced ideas off of or were you just working kind of on your own with the various iterations? Yeah, definitely. So I was inspired to do this project by a talk from a professor at Stanford University. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I was interning with the UW um, lab. And so there I had a mentor. Um, I worked with Dr. Shwedek Patel and Edward Wang. And they were very helpful in kind of giving me feedback and teaching me about 3D printing. And um, that's where I got some of the foundation. But um, it was really exciting to kind of work on this project. I would think so. And it's going to help so many people, which is really, really important. So what time is graduation? today? Oh, um, it's at 2 p.m. So. <laughs> you don't have a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, are you excited about that too? Yes, definitely. Got the summer off before you go to Harvard? Yeah, I'll be traveling and relaxing. So. Good for you. And what is the plan for tonight, the big celebration for <laughs> high school graduation? Um, so we have a senior party where uh, all the seniors in our class could go to some surprise location as organized by parents. So ah. we're very excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have siblings? Uh, yes, I have an older sister. And is she involved in science as well? 
Yeah, so she recently graduated from MIT and is working at Waymo, um, a self-driving car company. So Yeah, that's pretty cool. What would you say to younger girls who might be interested in science or math and encourage them to pursue a STEM education? Yeah, definitely. I think um, science is kind of the way for the future, and the biggest advice I'd give is don't give up. Um, and science is really an iterative process, and obstacles will come up, but it's really important to persevere and stay motivated. And yeah. And eventually find the answer <laughs> yeah. at the end of all of that. Thank you so much. We're so impressed. We can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you. But Harvard's a pretty good start. <laughs>